Welcome to another episode of the Profit Minded Business Podcast, where we're here talking with a couple of great business owners um, to share success stories and possibly pitfalls along the way. You know, we, we come together because most small business owners really don't have uh, a lot of time to connect with other business owners. And one thing that we've learned as we developed this was that it was so important to really look to other business owners for just general conversation because we learned so much from one another. So we hope that you're here to, uh, to pull away and to walk away with something very valuable. I know we're here with Dave Harms today, who is a regional sales manager for Prime America. He's had a fantastic career and an awesome story, a personal development and discipline how he got there. We're with, with Jacob here with, you know Jacob, if you've seen any of our other podcasts, he is part of the film production crew that makes this all possible with uh, iView Media and Drones iView. So we're lucky to have him here today and Always uh, getting some great stuff from him as well. So thanks so much for being here. And uh, Dave, why don't you kick it off, kick us off, and tell us a little bit about how you got to where you're at and about your story. Awesome. Well, we're excited to be here. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it is amazing that we're doing a podcast. You know, 23 years ago, no one, no one would have asked me to speak about anything. You know, <laughs> I was uh, I was an aircraft mechanic 23 years ago, and I loved it. I thought that's what I was going to do the rest of my life. Probably since I was 10 years old, that's kind of the direction I was headed. And then all of a sudden, uh, we got introduced to uh, to Primerica, and uh, I didn't know anything about money. I didn't know anything about people. Yeah. I never talked to people really. I'm I'm still an introvert. Uh, you won't it won't seem like it today because you know you're forcing me to talk. But um, <laughs> I'm totally fine not talking, being by myself. But um, I just got passionate, and I think that's probably one of the keys to success is really being passionate about what you do. And when I saw kind of what what the company, the possibilities, mm -hmm. uh, I just got so excited. And uh, within six months of working part time, I was making more than I did at the airlines. No kidding. And then two months <laughs> later, my wife quit her job. So, uh, you know, my father-in-law still is in awe, like, you made it? Like, <laughs> how, how did you do it? But it, it is exciting when you devote your life to something and get passionate about it. It, uh, it really can take off for you. Now, what's interesting about Primerica is that a lot of folks get involved, but they don't do as well. Right. So there's a story here uh, that we're going to hear today about how, what was different for you and what really made that, that trajectory possible. Right. Um, because I know there's a lot of folks out there, whether they're in financial services or just in general being a business owner, that they're frustrated with some sort of uh, lack of something. You know, something, it's just not clicking along. And what I've learned about you is that, you know, your business, uh, you put some things in place and you learned a lot along the way that helps you find a way to click along and for things to kind of fall in place and to do what you want them to do. Right. And right. it's not because you're lucky. It's not because, I mean, I'm pretty, you're probably a lucky guy anyway, but like, <laughs> it's not because you're lucky. It's not because, you know, you're the smartest guy in the room. It's because you did certain things. Am I right? It's, it's absolutely correct. It's funny you say about luck because somebody, you know, just the other day he says, good luck with that. Like, not like a nice, good luck. <laughs> good luck with that. It's like, and I was, I, usually I wouldn't do it, but I was like, dude, I'm already financially independent. Luck had nothing to do with it. Yeah. I just got mad that day. Usually I would be kind and say, oh, okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. But I was just like, luck has nothing to do with winning. Yeah. Um, it has everything to do with, are you passionate about what you do? And mm -hmm. it's amazing when you really believe in something. And that, that may be a, a, a slight edge I had is I believed that if somebody would teach me something, I could learn it. Like I didn't know anything about aircraft maintenance until someone taught me and you go to tech school for it and you do it for time to time. So I figured when I came to this business, I was like, well, if you'll teach me exactly what I need to do, yeah, I'm going to do it. Right. Yeah. Cause I, when I was an aircraft mechanic, I couldn't, um, uh, just kind of fix the plane the way I want it. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll put safety wire there. Uh, you <laughs> know, key, that's not necessary. I mean, yeah. who needs a bolt there? Right. You know, you had to follow it step by step by step. And I think success is a step by step formula. There's mm. a few things that if they're not done, no matter what your business is, you ain't going to make it. Yeah. And the personal development piece was the biggest one was because I knew I sucked. Right? <laughs> I, I knew I didn't know anything about this, you know, and I think sometimes people think they're at a level of knowledge. Yeah. Like I'm sure you experience in your business, you will, you're experiencing too, is people come to you and almost like tell you're the consultant and then they're telling you how they want to do it. Yeah. And you're like, I wasn't like that. I was like, I have no idea. How do, how do I do it? Yeah. So I never read a book in my life before <laughs> Primerica. 
And now I read, you know, three, four books a month. Uh, yeah. My biggest year, I think I read 62 books in a, in a year. Wow. And I never read a book in my life. And I'm still not a fast reader. I just, now I've learned to enjoy learning. And I think that's a key, you know, really, yeah. really get good and learn and develop yeah. your, you know, your, your value gap, I guess you could say. Yeah. No, no, let me ask you this. So something that, you know, is kind of a, a recurring thought I have, and I think it's all right. And mo most people don't like to think of themselves in this way, but I think it's all right to be a loser. You know, if you know, you're starting out as a loser, you know, so <laughs> to speak, you know, you're talking about, you know, I sucked. I didn't know anything. And right. most people, they would hate to admit that. But again, I, I think, you know, as long as you, you know, this is just a starting point. I'm not going to be the loser that I am now for the rest of my life. Is that kind of like what, what you were feeling, you know, maybe a, again, a little. How, I mean, how great is that that you, yeah. you don't, your lot in life is not set. Right. You set your, how you want. Right. You and uh, I don't, I don't think I thought I was a loser, <laughs> but I yeah. certainly wasn't winning. <laughs> I definitely wasn't winning. Um, and, 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 and I didn't, I thought, you know, Maybe if I could make a hundred thousand a year as a director of maintenance or something, that would be winning in my life. But it would have taken shoot twenty, thirty years or something. So to think that you can change things and go from being a loser to a winner, you know, in, in a relatively short period of time, it's not get rich quick, but it's certainly get rich in a short period of time. Right. If you do the right things. Okay. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, that, that's something you know. I, again, that's kind of been on my mind, and you know. Uh, it's interesting that you you brought up the whole self development thing, mm -hmm. and it it's hard, you know. It, it's it's not an easy path, you know. We talked a little bit before the show, uh, where it seems so obvious the things that you need to do to be successful, but it's hard to actually implement those right. things. Right. Uh, what was that like for you? Like, was it just like a, a switch that flipped for you? Like, I want to better myself, or was that something that just took time to constantly build? We were very fortunate to have a mentor in our business that we knew loved us, that we knew we cared about us, that they had a financial interest that if we did good, they would do good. So that gave me confidence to say pretty much anything he told us to do. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I don't know if I'll tell this story, but I, got, I literally got thrown out of a house my first six months. I got thrown out of three houses, actually. But the one that was most particular, um, you know, it, it, my, the, we, I was sitting in a training and, and my mentor is in front of the training and somebody asked, they said, well, what do you say to somebody if they say they're not interested? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, just ask them if they know any intelligent people you could go see. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the front row thinking, that is awesome. That is genius. I wrote that down. And that week, I'm out on an appointment. And they weren't listening. They were stubborn. They were getting totally taken advantage of financially. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, you know, that's And they told me no. And I said, well, that's fine. Do you know any intelligent people I can go see? And he stands up, puts his hand out, get out. Like, and I was like... And, and there's two ways you could react to that. I remember like it was yesterday. My, I'm getting my car. My, I'm so mad. Yeah. Like a lot of people get all sad, dejected. Oh, this isn't for me. Oh, God's calling me a new direction. No, you <laughs> suck. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and, and so I was like mad. Like that son of a gun. I'm going to get so successful and get my Mercedes and come back by his house. You know, like once I became successful, I, didn't, I had a broke down Jeep when I started. But, um, <laughs> but then the second thing I did is I called my mentor. Right. And I think a lot of people don't, they, they don't put their pride aside and ask for help. Yeah. But I called yeah. my mentor and I said, I said, Mark, I said, man, I tried that line you said in training and he threw me out. He said, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mark had to be real careful what he told me to say, because yeah. again, as an aircraft maintenance, you, I had to do you it just do like it just it. Like so, was told. Yes. So he said to say it, I, I said it, <laughs> you know, so it's amazing. I made it. <laughs> but again, you know, talking about the personal development, it's all about learning along the way, you know, right. realizing mm -hmm. that it's okay not to know things starting off or right. even 10 years down the road, you know, uh, something that I, I kind of resonate with is I, I hope to never know anything that way. There's always more to learn, you know, That's it, a great attitude. Uh, it, but some people like they hear me say that and they're like, what, you don't know anything. And you like own a business and like, you're, you know, doing pretty well for, you know, someone that, you know, of your age and everything. But I, I feel like if you, you ever declare that, you know, something, then you realize that, oh, there's nothing left to learn. Like, That's it, awesome. It, it, 
the Does most that make frustra- sense? Yeah. The most frustrating thing as a mentor now now I'm the mentor and the coach mm-hmm. is when people say I know that I did that like you coach them to say how'd you how'd you handle that situation uh, and then they totally did it the opposite way but I said well what if we tried this yeah oh that's what I did I like, you, you didn't do that otherwise you'd had results so to have yeah. that just humbleness I yeah. think it is that genuineness to say man. We can always learn. We can always get better. We're never right. That we're never right. at that. I think that's awesome. Well, yeah. That really is key. Um, was there a certain thing in the beginning? Obviously, you reached out to your mentors, and you had a lot of mentors within that. That your initial stages. Was there a certain book or something that really kind of transformed your reading uh, knowledge or your appreciation for books? Yeah, I think there, I mean, there was, there were several, uh, you know, first of the ones were just the regular financial books that Mark told me to read. Yeah. And I remember the first time I read my first book and I said, Mark, man, I read, I read a book that told you, I read that book he told me. He said, great, uh, read another. Like he didn't realize that was like the first book of my life and I'm 24 years old. <laughs> yeah, he didn't yeah. realize the, I was like so proud. Like I yeah. read a book. Uh, great. Go read another. Yeah. So I think, you know, success is not an accident by Tommy oh. Newberry. That okay. wasn't one of my first ones. I don't know what, if that came out 10 years ago or something, but that's yeah. like 10 self-help books in, in one. It talks about setting a schedule, talks about affirmations, talks about goal setting. I mean, it's probably one of the best goal setting chapters ever, you know, okay. and, uh, you know, how to win friends and influence people is right. just a staple. I've probably read seven or eight times. And uh, each time you read it, it's like you never read it before right. because you've yeah. experienced so many different things, so many different situations yeah. that you're like, dang, did I even read this before? <laughs> and uh, so now we, we teach that having a schedule mm-hmm. is critical because when you're an entrepreneur, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. I'm free. <laughs> and they sleep till noon. I'm like, <laughs> You're going to be back at a job real quick, you know? So, right. so we teach that, and we were taught this, but we teach you got to get up at the same time every day. Okay. Good. It really doesn't matter what time it is. Right. Um, I've, I've, mm-hmm. I've tried it all. I've, I've tried to get up at four. I've tried to get up at eight. I've tried to get up at six, you know, whatever. Right. Find out what works for you. Yeah. Um, but then get up at that time and then go to bed at the same same time every day. Okay. So you develop this natural Routine. biological clock and the last 30 minutes of my day from 1030 to 11, um, that's when I read. And I have my set spot in our house that has a chair that has the books I'm reading. Mm-hmm. I like to read four or five books at a time because I wow. tend to get bored at, you know, if you, you know, it just all depends. And that might be a good tip too, is yeah. read books that you can read. Right. I've been read book. I've been told by mentors, like, Big earning mentors, this book changed my life. And I'm like choking it down. Like I cannot, yeah. it, it, it was, it, I just, it wasn't moving me. Right. Right. And I said, gosh, I got to finish it. You told me to read it. And I just pick something that you can move through, mm-hmm. that you get excited about. It'll probably progress the more things you can read. But I think it's real important to have a schedule where you get up, you go. I know exactly what I'm going to do every morning. I know exactly what I'm going to do right before bed and I know exactly what I'm not going to do. Now, are, were you always kind of routine like that? Or was that something that you had to develop? That seems... I might have been because I, I mean, I've been working since I was 10 years old. That's and true. I had a paper route. And I wish kids could still have paper routes. My son, I tried to get him a paper route. You got to be like 21 and have a paper route. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know? But I had to, the papers had to be delivered. And this was in Minnesota. So whether it was 20 below, cool. whether it was two feet of yeah. snow, whether people wanted their papers. Yeah. Sure. And I had to go door to door to collect the money. Right. This is back in the day. I had my little thing and my little change machine mm-hmm. and yeah. I'd have to collect. And if they didn't pay, yeah. I'd have to come back, come back, yeah. you know, all these things. So that probably gave me some discipline. I, I always had to get up and deliver yeah. the papers, whether I felt like it or not, whether I, you know, it, I had to do it. Well, it's good to have that, but it's, it just goes to, re- to remind people that it's, you can develop these habits, right? Oh, I mean, totally. like, I mean, you're teaching this stuff now and you're watching people, to implement some version of what you're saying right now. Right. Um, how many people, when you start to mentor them uh, within the Primerica system, implement the routine, implement the some of the key things that have made you successful? And then what do you see the difference between them and those that don't? I mean, I think it's probably the 80-20 principle with anything. 20% yeah, of right. any business, any college, any nutrition program, any, anything in life, 20% of the people are going to do it when a hundred percent could. Right. 
And I did for years, it like really hurt me because I'm like, how do I get this person to do it? But then I realized all I can do is they show them what to do. All I can do is be an example. All we owe people is an example of success and an environment of success. They're going to have to, at some point, initiate some of the strategies, some of the ideas. Right. And if they don't, it's not because the company didn't work. It's not because they didn't have a good mentor. It's just they just didn't do those things. Wow. So yeah. it's so hard cool. to, it's hard to, as a, you, just have you to love let people. Go. You have and to it's let just go like, of that. You see them struggling. You know why they're struggling. Right. You know right. it. It's like blaringly obvious. And you want to help them. Yeah. You want to, but they got to, at some point, right. get up and, and make a phone call and do something. That's something uh, to tying it back to, you know, getting up. And, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're getting up at 4 or 5, 6 a.m. where most people, you know, consider that early. You know, I read something uh, actually in a science fiction book, really? you know, not not a self-development book. It had a lot of themes of self-development in it, yeah. uh, but it talked about, you know, just because you get up early doesn't mean you're doing a whole lot with your day either. You know, That's there, a good there, point. there there are people that will hear something like that, especially a lot of younger people like, oh, I just need to get up and then I'm going to be successful just because I got <laughs> up early. You know, it's like, you know. Whether your day is 12 hours long and you sleep 12 hours, 14 hours, whatever the case, just fill up your day, you know, make it worthwhile. That way, you know, when it is time to go to bed, you're actually tired, you know. It's not like, okay, it's time to get to bed and I'm going to have to do this again tomorrow. It's like, no, you, you want to go to bed because you've had a long day and you're tired and right. you want to get back up and do it again tomorrow. You know, and that awesome. I, I think that's something that so many people miss out on just because, I, again, the lack of implementation, like it, it's it is so clear. I mean, to me anyway, and right. it seems to, you know, you two as well. But it, a lot of this isn't rocket science. And, you know, I'm the last person to be talking, you know, I, I'm, I'm successful in the fact I'm doing what I want to do every day. But, you know, don't have the, you know record to show for it you know right. the the, the paper coming, trail right. to, to show for it but yeah. that's the thing even if it doesn't like it doesn't matter and one thing that i you know i've heard you know just through reading or online and whatever is a lot of people like they'll get so caught up on the output what am i going to get out of doing something as mm. opposed to worrying about the input like just focus on what you want to do and if you're doing it and being objective about how hard you're working at it Chances are nothing's guaranteed in life, but chances are you're going to get a favorable outcome by right. doing something, again, that you're passionate about. That was great, uh, Jacob. I, I think most people don't realize how good it feels to put in a good day, right? to give it all you got. I mean, when's the last time mm -hmm. someone's given it all they got for once in their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think people, when they think of work ethic, they think of it as a price oh i'm grinding i'm paying this price but don't you feel great when you put in a good day yeah i mean again it's just doing what you want to do and yeah. you know it may not all be business work so to speak but you know it's all right if you want to spend an hour or two with family i mean i kind of look at my life as work you know my right. life is my life's work you know Absolutely. i mean and I think a lot of people would benefit, you know, from a similar mentality, not saying everyone has to think the same way I right. do. I would I'd venture to say that's actually probably not a good thing. You know, you got to be yourself at, right. first and foremost. <laughs> I think that's also, you know, a, a huge part to being suc successful, you know. You're right. Um, but, yeah, you're also talking about, you know, being okay to make mistakes, you know. Right. And, you know, it, it's how you handle those mistakes, I think more than anything you know everyone's human you know right. it's right you're bound to make a mistake it's just what do you do when, when that happens you try to hide away from it or do you try to you know let the customer especially if it's you know in front of a customer like are you just upfront about it or are you going to try to push it back as long as you can you know right. those are big differences and you know the types of mentalities people have and I think the type of success that they have. Well, and there's 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 always a solution, mm -hmm. right? There is no mistake that is not can't be overcome. Right. You just are not at a level of knowledge to overcome it yet. Right. And we were always taught, thankfully, from, at an early age, if you don't know something with a client, you yeah. tell them. 
Yeah. Say, I think I know the answer, but I'm, I'm going to do some research for you. And when we get back together, I will absolutely have the answer for you. Right. And you know how much business that generated? You know how much trust that generates? Mm -hmm. You know how much of a relationship you have when you tell someone, I'm not quite sure, right. Right. but I guarantee you I will find the answer? That is awesome. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I had two big clients. Like, this is in my second year in the business. Big clients mm -hmm. that I did not know the answer on two different things. And I told them that. And still, they became, they were big clients. Right. So I think if I would have tried to talk my way out of it or explain they something, they would have known. They and right. they probably wouldn't have been big clients. So it's okay. To, now, but here, how do you handle it is you don't make it again. <laughs> you right, know, right, right. people make the same mistakes over and over and over. No, if you make a phone call, and I, I have not gotten thrown out of a house since <laughs> I, I have not said that ever you know yeah. since so you you make adjustments with every phone call with every presentation not to beat yourself up and say oh man i, I suck mm -hmm. at this i suck at this it's just like okay how could the better question is how could i do it better how okay. could i do it better how could i do it better how could i do it better and then you'll start getting the right results so david as a manager you know how are you you know obviously this is stuff that you're teaching so when you are working with somebody as uh, basically talking to other small business owners about working with people, their employees, how do you handle that conversation with them? And how do you allow their mistakes to be okay? Right. I, I think we encourage it. Uh, I think it's, we, it, we laugh about it. We always say, that's going to be such a great story from the stage when you make it. Right. <laughs> I mean, I was working with a lady yesterday that's just going through some tough times, you know, yeah. and uh, it, it, it's, it's difficult, but she's going to make it through. She's making the right decisions. She's taking the right actions. She's going to make it through. And that's exactly what I told her. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We screwed up here, but that's going to be a great story from the stage. Yeah. Right. And uh, don't tell any, and let me say this too, is don't yeah. tell anyone your problems while you're going through it. <laughs> Wait till a couple years later when you make it, because I think too many people, they like, they advertise all the drama in their life, all the problems in their life. Mm -hmm. And like, why would you do that? You're magnifying mm -hmm. that. You're mm -hmm. resonating that in your brain, and right. it's never going to get out of there, right? My yeah. wife didn't even know I got thrown out of a house. She heard about it at the training. Yeah. Like, when I, when I came home after, you know, a terrible day, how was your day? Great. Awesome. How was yours? Yeah. I never, in 23 years, she would tell you, I've never said whining about my day. Like, it drives me yeah. crazy. You know, that's funny. Uh, we had kind of touched on this topic very similarly with one of our past guests, Sean, where, you know, you come home and you tell your significant other, you know, oh. good news or bad news, and it's just amplified, you know, it, you know, getting kicked Dangerous. out of the house. Yeah, it's, it's not really a big deal. But you know, uh, the way that our guest put it, it was like, oh, the wife's thinking, oh, we're losing our house, our mortgage, you know, all that. And yeah. it, it's, it's a matter of, yeah, you want to admit, you know, when you make mistakes, but it's how you communicate those mistakes, you know, it's, big. It, it's, it's big. huge. It's a challenge because you want to share everything, right. but it's also the challenge of, you know, it, you really do need to uh, be okay with what happened, right, right. you know, and when you right. start to talk about it, it's hard to not let the negativity of something begin to settle in, I guess, is why that's... Right. Because you could explain, no, it's no no big deal. It was just a phone call. We're not losing the mortgage, right? But for whatever reason, it's hard to address that negativity as a negativity. We all, I look at it as a learning, right, something exactly. to learn from. I yeah. look at it as a, wow, okay, that hurt, but I now know right. what this looks like. You know what I'm saying? I can make an adjustment. I can grow from this as a person, as a business owner, as a professional. And so I think as long as uh, that 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 weird wanting to be a partner with our spouses and at the same time wanting to, to always present to ourselves that a negative thing is not a negative as long as it teaches you something. Right. It's very that's hard right. to translate. I think that's what was really going on, you know, in that storyboard. And same thing with you. Like, why come home and talk about you got kicked out, you know what I'm saying, and tell the whole story because then she's going to be like, you did what? <laughs> you're an idiot. You know, talking about, why right. would you say that? Right. You know, and you're like, well, my mentor told me, yeah. well, maybe you shouldn't listen to Mark anymore. Right. You know, right. it's like, it. you don't know how it's going to go, but you just know for you, you learn from it, right? Yeah. And then you move on. 
but that that's a very scary thing and and it's uh, not scary so much as just it's a strange scenario to find yourself in something that uh you know we've touched on but haven't really gone in depth is how important i think it is to have a mentor in your life you know Mm -hmm. if not multiple mentors i mean especially you know someone young like myself and not to call you guys you know not young but (laughs) you know like you're talking getting started 23 years ago 23 years ago i wasn't talking to anyone (laughs) i wasn't around and uh but thank you jacob (laughs) you're welcome uh but no it, it 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 really does, I mean, help to have someone that is going to guide you along through experience that, hey, you might want to watch out for this so you don't make the same mistakes that yeah. I've made. But, you know, to the same point, you know, I'm very much one. I learn as I do. Right. And so sometimes, you know, even if you get that advice from someone, find yourself making the same mistake. Oh, I realize what they're saying now. And it's not till after you've made that same mistake yourself. Oh, why didn't I just listen to them from the get go? Mm -hmm. But you only learn on a need to know basis, (laughs) right? And you'll sit in training and that we covered it, but until you experience it live, you just, you don't, you're not going to retain it. So it's okay to, to make those mistakes as long as you're not major ones. (laughs) (laughs) Um, something about going back to the managing of people, um, what do you think about the different generations coming up? You probably work with and mentor a variety of different age groups. Uh, you mentioned the work ethic, and uh, I just wanted to ask you your thoughts on the millennial generation coming up versus, let's say, an older generation. Are you seeing kind of just trends as far as who each kind of who they are? I mean, I I think the millennial generation is awesome. I mean, yeah. I think there's entrepreneurial minded people. They've saw their parents work for 20, 30 years in a job and now they realize, shoot, I don't want to end up like that. Yeah. So they're entrepreneurial. They say there's not as much of a work ethic or all those things, but there's a lot of hungry millennials out there that yeah. want to do something great with their life and are willing to put the work into it. So I think there's probably just as many lazy Generation X, uh, baby boomers, you know, the greatest generation. I mean, every generation has a percentage of people that want to get after it and a percentage of people that just want a safe, secure job, if that even exists. But I think uh, I think we're in for a great future. Uh, they want to be a part of a team. Yeah. They want to be a part of something that's meaningful. Right. And if you have, you know, every business has something that's meaningful and a team environment, no matter yeah. what your business is, that's the definition of a business is have something that you're doing is meaningful and uh, a team environment. So, yeah. and they love that. So I'm excited about the millennial generation. That's great. Yeah. I guess you're right. And you know, that goes back to that 80, 20 rule. Yeah. It doesn't really, it doesn't. It doesn't. Really well, people said, is it different in Georgia than Colorado? We built our business in 20 years in Colorado. Is how is it different in Georgia? I'm like, people are people right. wherever I live. You know, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I think people are people. <laughs> yeah. That, that's something that again, you know, a lot of people like to talk about like the global problems that people have with like conflict with each other. At the end of the day, 99% of people just want to get by and be happy with their lives, do what they want to do. And that's the same for here in the United States, going state to state, or, you know, you go to the Middle East, you know, the, the biggest problem I think with like the new generations is just trying to sort through all this information that you know we, we, we have to go through where and realize yeah for as much ne- negativity that there is, is out there you know by and large people you know are just trying to make it through their lives and yeah it, it's I, I think that's something also that you know stops a lot of people you know it's right. like oh w- why even put in the effort to do something where someone else is just going to you it's know dangerous. yeah stop me it's like the only person at the end of the day that shouldn't stop you from doing anything is yourself. And, you know, sure, that, no doubt. It, it, it's just kind of interesting to see how you, you do talk about, you know, that's the case for, you know, many generations, not just mine or millennials or, or whatever, because I think that is a very common theme <clears throat> that people like to push where if you really look at it objectively, I mean, I think that goes as far back as, you know, humanity, you know, I say this all the time and train on it. People are awesome. Yes. People are awesome because you don't want to get into the negative stuff. And I also say there's money everywhere. Opportunity. Right? There's everywhere. money everywhere. 
right? We're in the greatest country in the face of the planet. There's right. money everywhere. And you just got to go out and be willing to do what it takes to go get it. Right. But I don't want to ever get in the poverty mentality. I don't want to ever get in the... And, and even demographics, they say, oh, this demographic believes this. or this. I don't want to get into stereotypes at all. People are individuals. People are individuals, and they're awesome. Right. Yeah, that, that's something, you know, I'm definitely more so like the people person of my company, yeah. whereas uh, my chief video officer, he, he does fall into the tropes of trying to always like watch like the negative uh, stuff going on in the news. And he's not a people person, but that's all right because – you know, I tell him to do something and he does it and he does a great job at it, you know, and it, going back to like building a team, it's all right to, you know, have some of those people as long as you know who they are, right? right you know, right. It, if they're a sheep dressed in sheep's clothes, that's all right. It, you get into problems when it's like <laughs> a lion in, a, you know, sheep's clothes, so right. to speak. And right. th that's, that's something kind of, you know, interesting to, uh, to try to navigate you know when you're building a business trying to build a team around you where you, right. know, you don't want everyone thinking the same way you, you know it, right. but i think to really lead a business i mean you do need to love people at, at the end of the day i mean that's uh, every <laughs> right. business is a people business right, <laughs> right. If, you, every if you don't business. if you don't love the people that you're working with you know chances are you're not providing any value to them right and yeah yeah that's that's Again, good. a lot of people fall into that trope of, oh, yeah, people suck and I can't do this because that person's going to, you know, stop me. And the only right. person stopping you is yourself. That is 100% yeah. true. And exactly. not everybody's going to be like you. That, right. that was hard in our business that I just assumed everyone was going to be like me. Um, but that's not the case. You yeah. want all kinds. And all yeah. kinds can win. It doesn't really matter, yeah. you know, the four different personality types and which <laughs> one you are and all that. Right. Everybody can win. And really quick, yeah, uh, that's something that also, like, I hate, you know, oh, I'm this personality type where, you know, you, you say you're an introvert, and I would see myself as an introvert in a lot mm -hmm. of cases, but, you know, we're adaptable, you know, right. when it's time to go out, meet with people, talk, have conversations, you're happy to do that, but at the end of the day, I'm just as happy as, as you, you know, <laughs> when it's time to sit down, read a book, or do whatever I want to do in my personal life, I am just as happy to do that, you know, as I am interacting with people and it, people like to identify people just off right. like one characteristic, one trait and even occupation, you know, that's something that's kind of been on my mind as of late, you know, I don't even like the term entrepreneur as much just because I feel like that puts me in a box. It's like, you know, I'm not just what I do for my business, you know, I'm, I'm a son, I, like to have a family you know one day <laughs> right and you know like i, I want to be identified as all those things as a complex individual as opposed to Love hey I, you're an entrepreneur or you know you're a dentist or you know whatever your occupation is it's like people are so much more complex than that right. and that everyone wants to boil it to, down to like one identity and that's you're right that's that's powerful yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially men. I think most men, unfortunately, it's their it's what they do. It's what they can proudly hand a business card to somebody, and this is who I am. Right. Shoot, what if something bad happens in your business? You, who are you then? You know, right. right. Better be more than well, yeah. just your job. You know. That's good. Um, some of the things I've kind of pulled away from what we've been talking about is leadership. You know, how to lead a business. You know, and I've heard a lot of things from you. It's it's that you've developed a a true routine of personal development. Uh, you love people and that you don't embrace negativity and problems as something of negative, but you embrace them as learning experiences. Right. And you, you, uh, you are a model of success to your people. You know? So I think it's interesting that leading a, a great team is all about having those pieces. You know, as small business owners run their businesses, that they really need to recognize that to develop a great business, you really have to be a great leader of people. Mm. And to, to miss that area of personal development for the sake of growth um, is probably going to hinder your ability to actually grow and develop your business, would you say? Oh, absolutely. No, yeah. no doubt about it. Is there something that you'd say, like, <clears throat> listening to, I mean, everything you've said here, you've really grown so much, and it sounds like every year, every month, you are personally growing as a person. Uh, what would you say to your to yourself, and probably something that you say all the time to people you're mentoring now, uh, that you felt like you know really 
would help them prevent some of the angst that people go through in trying to build a business or trying to build their own practice or their client base. Right. I, I think it's really consistency. There you um, go. If they're just, if they would just stay consistent with a schedule and doing the right things each and every mm -hmm. day, it feels good because you know, hey, maybe I didn't have a great day, but I know I'm on track. I know I'm making progress. I know yeah. I'm heading in the right direction. The only times you start doubting yourself and worrying and fear, and I've been there. I mean, I've we've, it, 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 it has grown, but not all the time. And, it, and I can always identify, shoot, 90 days ago, I stopped reading. Uh, Shoot, 90 days ago, I stopped doing this as intently as I used to. You can always identify it. Unfortunately, now, hopefully you can bounce back quicker and identify it quicker. Right. But uh, there's been times where I was flat out depressed, like didn't even want to do anything. Right. But then you can identify, shoot, I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that. And, you know, I, I think, I, I just think if you love what you do, yeah. I've tried to, we've been blessed. We're, we, we don't have to work for money at all and we haven't for probably 10 years and i tried to kind of retire mm -hmm. and play golf and ski and do all those things i did that for about six mm -hmm. months and it was awesome i love all that stuff i surfing and all that and it was great mm -hmm. but mentally i was depressed yeah because i think i'm supposed to give back i'm supposed to do something great with my life and i'm supposed to influence other people how sad would it be if all the people who have already made it just said Go get yours. I got mine. <laughs> right. Wouldn't that be a terrible world? I mean, uh, but it's, it it's, it, that's yeah. what gives me passion. This, this podcast, I'm so energized because I'm like, I hope this changes somebody's life. I hope yeah. somebody listens to this and says, man, yeah, I can do it. You know, and that, that I don't know when that get old. I, I don't, I hope that never gets old. I hope I just always love giving back and coaching and mentoring and being an example. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's something, yeah. Tying back to our original conversation of being passionate. It's, you know, it is easy, again, like you said, to like fall into not doing work because you think it's work. But when in reality, once you just get started, you realize how fun it is. Fun. And then once, as soon as you cut back for just a second, you know, you, you take a break. Like for me, you know, yeah, it, it, it goes from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows real, really, really quick if, you know, I'm not on top of always wanting to improve myself, you know, right. and there's a lot of action that comes with that. It's not just wanting to improve myself. It's actually right. taking those actions, getting yourself out there. You know, now more than ever, you know, this doesn't hold true as much, but you're not going to build a business, you know, just sitting at home all day, you know, right. you know, developing a product or whatever. And that's something like in my community that a lot of people will fall into like, Hey, I got to like develop this platform and everything. And then totally abandon like, actually going out providing value to people and meeting with people and figuring out what they want before I, then stepping back and saying That's good. like mm -hmm. all right I'm going to develop something based off of what someone actually wants as opposed to what I think they want I think there's you know a balancing act of that you know and that's where you really find you know the different levels of success where you know you give people what they don't know what, that they want you know and right. that that's I I think you know, easier said than done, you know, right. for a, a lot of people. Um, but it, it is awfully, uh, it, again, just interesting to, to see how, how easy it is to fall into those tropes of feeling down and bad about yourself when you know you're not doing what you really want to be doing, but it just still, I, like, like, yeah, like... Yeah, a lot of it, what you're saying is, I mean, you, you can... You can decide to wake up every day at the same time and develop some routine, but if you don't have the right balance of activities, right? You know, it's easy to fall into a place of self doubt, especially if you're spending too much time on product development. My offering isn't right, right? I mean, and you're not actually out there providing the service to make the iterations that you need to make. Or, it, you know, it's one thing to sit there in the training courses and, and read the books on, you know, being a, a, a financial planner, but it's like if you're not actually out there working with folks, if you're not in the homes having conversations then you're not going to learn, which is what we talked about in the beginning. So it's, it's not just having the track of, I'm going to be, I'm going to personally develop all day long. Yay. You know, I'm going to do all these great things. I'm going to wake up and be fresh. Early bird gets the worm. And I'm going to read a book and I'm going to read another book. And then I'm going to read some more. And then I'm going to watch a YouTube while I'm doing this. I'm doing great. No, you're not. Right. You can't do that. You actually have to have a balance of activities that makes sense for your business. 
and, and whatever business it is. Right. I mean, if, if you need to wake up and be with your team, develop your team, and then you have a, a lunch with a, with a person that you may be doing business, whatever the case is, you have to figure out what your calendar needs to look like. And you usually get right. that from somebody else who's been there before you. You know, and if you don't have someone who's been there before you, then you need to really decide uh, between money activities and personal development activities. And it sounds like your personal development, you know, really at some point, you know, became before you went to bed. Right? It wasn't during the money hours. Never. <laughs> right? I mean, am I right? I mean, it, it wasn't during the money hours. Now, you were personally developing because you were putting your, your learning and your education into practice. Right. You were applying it, whether it was talking to customers, you know, working with clients already or prospects. You've got to go out there and build that balance. Right. And that balance is what makes us feel joyful about working hard. It's that balance that energizes our bank account. Uh, it's that balance that, that brings us a happy home and a happy business and a happy team and ideally wonderfully happy clients and customers. Right, right. But if we begin to get bottlenecked in our own whatever it is, I mean, it could be there's all kinds of weird bottlenecks that we create for ourselves that um, keep us down, then it doesn't matter how disciplined we are. If we're disciplined in the wrong yeah. things, that's a good good luck with that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? We teach that all the time is self-development is yeah. worthless. Yeah. Without taking action, yes, right. it's the combination. And That's I, I, just because of my experience in financial services. I mean, there's a lot of actions you can take that don't actually, that really aren't designed to be actions that develop results. Right. I mean, there's nothing better than planning to make phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm gonna scrub this list. I'm gonna really clean it up, and then oh, I'm gonna do some research on it first because you know I, I gotta make sure I know their website. <laughs> oh, I, well, you know what? Sometimes these numbers aren't right, so oh, I got I gotta make sure the number. I'm gonna do a reverse lookup. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like there's so many ways that we can, and that, that's more for the financial services and, and outbound calls, but like. Any business is going to have those kind of things. If you're spending too much time, you know, micromanaging your team rather than allowing them the freedom to go out and take ownership over their, over their piece of the business, you know, letting them make mistakes and then not, and when they come back to because they've made a mistake, not then go into micromanage mode, but then go into, wow, let's, what else could you have done differently, you know, and allowing that mistake swallow it you know and not let it be because it's your baby right this is your business but allowing those mistakes to help them grow and develop more uh more of an owner mentality over their area of the business and it's so often that a business owner will shift when there's a mistake being done to overcompensate for what he feels like shouldn't be happening rather than allowing his team to learn and grow from it mm. and become more of a that you want to create employees that treat your business as though they are a part of it. Remember right. what you said before: people right. want to take ownership in something more meaningful for their life. Right. If they're just going to because they're fulfilling a certain level of tasks, and the environment doesn't allow them to grow as people, I mean, the next competitor that comes along and offers them more money. Your that their role is now commoditized as opposed to you know giving the value that it needs to in order for them to develop. Right. Yeah, one uh, I've had a, a mentor that's come into my life recently, and mm -hmm. uh, going through some documentation that he wrote wrote up, and one of the things that's really uh, resonated with me and how I can better this for my employees or contractors yeah. is like, don't make their work meaning like meaningless. Like, make sure every job every work that's done within the company has meaning because yeah. otherwise you know it does become a monotonous thing that they're not going to be passionate about yeah. you know being involved building something greater than ourselves mm -hmm. it's and again it, it, it's nice yeah i, I want to just have you know a peon you know run through all these business cards and you know scan them in and it's like but that's not, you know, yeah, it needs to be done, but, you know, it, it's not meaningful. It's not going to get that employee out of bed every day, you know, wanting to be a part of something greater. Well, you know, there's a TED talk out there about the why, you know, and having a Simon why. Simon Sinek, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think it's, I think someone said the other day that it's like the the biggest, most viewed TED talk. But the, the brilliance of it is that if your business doesn't really have a good why, neither will your employees. 
Mm. Right. You know, and so you really need to not just connect that for yourself because, you know, you're trying to elevate your own mindset around your business, but you need to share that why with your employees and help them really become part of that why. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work recently on, you know, compensation structures when I work with clients. And it's, you know, back in the day of like Xerox and Kodak, it was very important to have this commission structure because you wanted your salespeople to go out there and be able to earn more than the CEO. You know, that was like the, the way you wanted it. But if you, as things changed over time, and we were just talking about the millennials and wanting to be part of a team, and wanting to be part of something, what's happened is that the intrinsic value of your culture is just as important as your incentive structure on the external side for money. Mm. And if you miss that, uh, you can also malfunction how you develop your culture. So people sometimes, and employees, will kind of accept that they need to provide a bare minimum when it comes to the intrinsic because they all have a job to do. It's a mistake. Right. The, the owner, most small businesses, they want to eventually be able to remove themselves from the day-to-day -day operations. But if they're not treating their employees like they could be part of something, they're always going to have to come back in and micromanage. And I, it's that cycle that prevents them from being able to truly have you know, a, a true business and not just a, a glorified job. A good way, you know, I'm still going through that process myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, training operators, video uh, videographers, photographers, drone pilots, uh, audio people. And one thing I found helped me navigate that is not asking anyone to do something that I have not or will not do myself. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's, I think, really powerful. Right. Yeah, where, you know, I have asked people to scan in business cards for me, but I've done that myself, you know, because yeah. I know it's going to help us, you know, build up a client list that we can start sending emails to. It's, you know, it is important, even though it's not the most glorifying, you know, job to do. And I, I think that's, you know, something that a lot of people can benefit from is, all right, would I want to do this if I was given the task? Yeah. If not, you know, would you still do it? You know, and I think, you know, if both of those are a no, chances are it's not a job worth, you know, doing. Yeah. And well, people work for appreciation, praise, and money. Right. And money's mm. probably the lowest one. Yeah. yeah. The appreciation yeah. and praise is the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's all very true. Um, well, Jacob, what is one thing that you would think someone's going to walk away? What was the one thing you're going to walk away from today in our talk? Oh, man. That's a. <laughs> there's actually quite a bit. Um, but I think it all ties back into, you know, wanting to better yourself, you know, not just for yourself, but the people around you, you know, wanting to bring them all up with you. Um, and something that is still in the back of my head is one of the dumbest things, but, you know, tying it back into actually taking action for your life. You know, this is a conversation that my brother had with this, uh, my older brother had a, uh, the same junior year, um, high school literature teacher that I did. Yeah. And, uh, she was having a private conversation with him that he informed me what she said. And she was like, your brother's smart, but he's a lazy piece of shit. Uh, and, uh, wow. she said that to him. About yeah. To him about me. And, uh, it's inspirational. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, but it was so true because I always did the bare minimum in life to get the most out of it. And to some degree, I, I mean, I still do that. You know, I, I, I do the least for the most. But, you know, that is something that, while I don't want her to be right, you know, I want to actually do something with my life because <laughs> yeah. there's smart people out there, you know, around every corner, you know, and who, who doesn't consider themselves, you know, above average, you know, as far as intelligence, right? But if everyone considers themselves above average, then that's everyone's average, mm -hmm. right? So I, I think... Tying it all back in is just self-development and, you know, just being well, passionate you're definitely about, no, you know. You're definitely no longer the, the, the lazy version of that story. <laughs> yeah, so no, that's but, good. I mean, <laughs> that's not my only motivating factor, yeah. but it does, like, you know, I, I don't want people to, you know, define my life for me, you know. That's that's my job. I'm yeah, not. yeah. So what is, uh, did you, I mean, you were the one that, you know, kind of provided so much of the content today, but is there something that you're, 
taking away that you find is something different or, or maybe I, mean, I love point? just being with fellow business owners and mm-hmm. it's so inspirational to hear your story. I love that story. That's going to be, you know, Michael Jordan got cut from his basketball team. That, that, that teacher or that coach, you know, <laughs> she's immortal. I love Jordan, her though. But, she know. was a great teacher. And, and those are inspirational stories, right? Yeah. Like Mark, 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 the guy who trained me said, she's pretty sharp. I don't know about him. He was talking about my wife. So she's pretty sharp, but I don't know about him. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was my first inspirational talk. And, uh, and so I just love being around business owners and uh, being a part of something great. And you guys are doing amazing things. I was thinking about that, too, with self-development. I never read during the day, but I certainly listened to it, it wasn't podcast back in the day, but it was CDs, tapes, now podcasts. Yeah. You can even listen to YouTube. Well, I, I think you ought to turn your car into a classroom. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And uh, I think most people miss that. They're listening to the radio or talk radio or something. Listen to this podcast. Listen to something that's inspirational while you're driving around, uh, especially in Atlanta. There's a lot of window, windshield time. A lot time. of driving. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, well, so we're going to wrap it up. Um, okay. Dave, tell us a little bit about how someone can reach out to you. I know that, you know, a couple of things about your business is that you are looking for people who do want to uh, do something on their own and pave their own way. Um, tell us a little bit about how they can reach out to you and maybe more about that. Yeah, there's a couple of different ways. I uh, have my website is primerica.com backslash Dave Harms. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're welcome to call my cell phone, 719-310-3533. Uh, or email me at powerteam100 at gmail.com. Nice. Great. And Jacob, tell us, you know, bring us home here with how do people reach out to you and maybe something specific about why someone would reach out to you right now. Go to iView Media for any of your digital or virtual media <laughs> needs. Uh, we do everything from podcasts like this. If you want to produce your own, we have a solution to do that. Right now, our big three focuses are in uh, residential real estate, uh, insurance, doing uh, virtual home inventories, and construction, providing uh, progression management using drone photography. So anyone in those industries, I definitely encourage to reach out. Just go to iview.media. That's www.iview.media. Or email direct me, uh, email me directly at info.iview, uh, info at iview.media. Or call me at 678 678- Two four nine zero five seven nine, or just Google me. <laughs> Great, and I'm Corbin Cook with SMB Strategy Consultants, where I help business owners as a fractional CFO, and of course I'm part of the larger executive fractional team with Oxelum Associates, where we provide the talent of management in that that space where we actually make that access to those resources affordable. Um, and you can reach me at four zero four seven eight three 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 zero five, or of course. Uh, look us up at smbstrategyconsultants.com. Thanks so much, guys. It's been a, a great time. Enjoy, I know we've all learned us. something, and hopefully someone listening has pulled away just as much value as I know there is here. So thanks again.